Now I would like to bring Dr. Pajo Asan Swachere, who was uh, the Vice Chancellor of University of Ghana. It is more like uh, Vice Chancellor of University of Delhi uh, for, for Ghana. And we had the fortune of uh, getting him after he finished his tenure there as the Director of Eastern and Southern Africa Office. And he has been guiding us and leading us in this project that we are implementing in India. And I would like him to come up and give uh, his global experiences at this stage. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, Mr. Secretary of um, Taminadu, and then um, Commissioner for Agricultural Production. And good morning to um, our progressive farmer. Good morning to our chairman. Good morning, um, Dr. Yoshi, um, Dr. Badeville, and then my good friend, um, Dr. Suresh Babu, who we have been working together for some time now. I'm pleased to be here, and um, I'm very happy that uh, this day has finally come. Let me thank you all for coming to this workshop and the launching of the portal we have been working on for about 18 months, 24 months now. We are happy that this day has come, and we are able to outdoor the knowledge management portal, even as we continue to work on it. The work is not finished yet. We will, we will launch it but we will continue to work on it. This is work in progress. We never finish working on a portal, because we need to update it, we need to expand the information and everything. We are grateful to the IKP Trust for funding the effort, and we hope that the portal will benefit Indian farmers and help to advance agricultural practice in India for lessons to be replicated in other parts of the world. The initiative is a response to the recognition that knowledge and information have become the major drivers of social and economic transformation in the world. There is a saying in my language, um, so it is a Ghanaian language, which says that if you think knowledge is expensive, try ignorance. If you think it is expensive to get knowledge, just try ignorance, and then you see how expensive um, that is. The former World Bank President um, Wolferson made a statement in March 1997. He said, we used to think of capital as the scarce factor in production, and of the transfer of capital um, as the key instrument of growth. Knowledge is now as important if not more a factor in development. And this trend is set to intensify in the 21st century. Because uh, people want to find money, they want to find land, they want to do all of these things, and they think these are the most important things. But Officer is saying that perhaps knowledge is most important thing that we need to be able to get, even to find where suitable land is, where the fertilizer is what price is prevailing in the market. All of this is you need knowledge and information. And Wolferson is saying that um, he thinks that um, in the 21st century, knowledge is going to surpass all the other factors of production. Taminadu has an interesting vision, and kindly allow me to restate it. Vision 2023 20, aims to make Taminadu India's most prosperous and progressive state with no poverty, and a state where its people enjoy all the basic services of a modern society, and live in harmonious engagement with the environment and with the rest of the world. I was excited to know that the team six of the vision is to make uh, Terminal do the knowledge hub and innovation capital of India by 2023. The vision recognizing the creation and nurturing of an appropriate atmosphere that aids innovation and sustenance of knowledge as one of the most important prerequisites for achieving a sustained growth in agriculture, manufacturing, and services. I'm just quoting from Vision 2023. Those of you who have seen it, you can refer to team six of that vision. Innovation involves the extraction of economic, ecosystem, and social value from knowledge. 
It involves putting ideas, knowledge, and technology to work in a manner that brings about a significant improvement in performance. Essentially, innovation is an idea, practice, or object that is successfully introduced into economic or social phenomenon. In agriculture, this can include new knowledge or technologies related to primary production, processing, and commercialization, all of which can positively affect the productivity, competitiveness, and livelihoods of farmers and others. The UNTAD, uh, the United Nations um, Conference on Trade and Development, um, had a report in 2007 subtitled Knowledge, Technological Learning and Innovation for Development, which focuses on knowledge accumulation, technological learning, and the ability to innovate as vital processes toward genuine productive, productive capacity development in these countries. And innovation results from production and processing or adaptation of knowledge or information. The production of knowledge is achieved by exposing what we know to what we do not know. Increased mobility of knowledge has made recycling of knowledge easier. The new emphasis is on putting knowledge into use. Thus, the capacity to innovate is a function of the behavior of systems for producing, absorbing, and using knowledge. The actions towards sustainable development require a mix of scientific, economic, social, and political knowledge. In a dynamic world, innovations are important to remain competitive, keep pace with development, and improve well-being. However, innovations do not occur in a vacuum. They require knowledge and the processing of that knowledge by innovators to come up with a new idea, practice, or object that can be successfully introduced into economic or social processes. Therefore, knowledge must be created, accumulated, and managed to be useful for innovations. Agricultural research plays an important role in agricultural innovation systems in producing the technologies that will uh, promote increased productivity. Published estimates of the rate of return on agricultural research and development and extension investments in the development world average about 43% a year. This is a World Bank estimate done in 2008. Using provisional level data for China for 1970-1997, if Prince Director General Sheng Fan in 2002 showed that Poverty reduction effect per unit of agricultural research and development investment ranked only to investment in rural education. The innovation system, systems approach moves away from a traditional linear research and development model in which research is completed and the results are passed on to users through extension. Instead, it emphasizes the need to capture to nurture the demand for knowledge and technologies among a range of action actors, including farmers, researchers, extension officers, policy makers, private sector companies, entrepreneurs, non-governmental agencies, and other intermediary organizations, and encourage them to demand relevant knowledge. The emphasis is on demand relevant knowledge, not just to accept whatever that you give them, but the farmers, the users must demand the knowledge, knowledge that they want. The flow of knowledge among these actors is important to get innovations to work to, have, um, to advance food and agriculture. We are motivated by this flow in developing the knowledge management portal we are launching today. And so many of the actors in the agriculture value chain were consulted in gathering the information that we have in the portal. Knowledge has to be managed so as to make it useful, and this is what the portal and these associated activities purport to do. The driving force behind knowledge management is improved competence and competitiveness, which can largely through action and learning. Knowledge management can be illustrated dramatically by saying that when you have information 
and you add meaning to the information, you create knowledge. And then when you add content to the knowledge, you get to what is called an action. And when you add learning to the action, you get to what is called competence. So you move from information to knowledge to action to competence. That is what we want to do. We want our farmers to be as competent as we want people who go into space or pilots or whatever to be. Just to be as competent as they should be. Agricultural education and extension can play a crucial role in the ongoing global economic and social transformation process to transfer technology, support learning, assist farmers in problem solving, and enable farmers to become more actively embedded in the agricultural knowledge and information system. However, many farmers have complained about the unavailability of extension staff in their locality for consultation or advice. In connection with this, a Malawian female farmer during the dialogue session in um, Malawi asked the local district agricultural development officer, and I quote, we no longer have agricultural extension workers based in our communities and, and visiting us every day. So how do you expect smallholder farmers like us to learn new farming technologies or to learn how to improve our agricultural enterprises? Um, a famous network in Africa called Fan in 2011 um, um, had this quotation from this woman uh, who was speaking in, um, in Malawi. Even when they are available, many women do not get access to extension officers because many of them are men and there may be cultural inhibitions for their interaction with women farmers. We all, with almost one billion small-scale farmers worldwide, extension is urgently seeking for the best ways to support these farmers in terms of information, technology, advice, and an empowerment. There has been an emergence of innovative extension approaches, including fee for service in New Zealand and Denmark, inclusive village level public extension service in China, market driven empowerment through farmer groups and privatization in Uganda, farmer field schools in Asia, and more recently in East Africa, farmer training centers and specialized extension agents in Ethiopia client-oriented agricultural extension in Latin America and the Caribbean, and more recently, ICT-based agricultural extension and advisory services in Asia and Africa. The ICT revolution has, uh, has aided knowledge management and provided a large number of options for the creation, accumulation, and dissemination of knowledge over large areas and for a large number of people. These include mobile telephony, innovative community radio and television programs, mobile phones in combination with radio, video shows, information kiosks, web portals, rural telecenters, pharma call centers, video conference, office multimedia CDs, and open distance learning. With 10% increase, in high-speed internet connection, economic growth increases by 1.3%. So it is worth investing in high-speed um, internet connections. This is a World Bank um, estimate um, on information technology, which was done in 2009. ICT-based agriculture extension brings incredible opportunities and has the potential of enabling the empowerment of farming communities. With the availability and use of ICTs, the, population for, um, the, the proposition for an increasing number of extension staff may no longer be wholly valid. People are complaining, they don't see extension officers. But maybe we need to concentrate more on ICTs as a way of reaching as many as possible. Fortunately, the developing world is witnessing a phenomenal increase in mobile phones acquisition. And when they are combined with other ICT platforms like radio, the impact on agriculture and other sectors can be very high. There is evidence that rural incomes have been increasing with the use of ICTs to access knowledge and information. 
For instance, in Mozambique, CTA in 2006 and Jensen and others in 2004 have shown that farmers with access to market information have seen improvements in farm prices and have increased the value of their sales. The use of ICTs to improve information flow and to connect people within the rural areas have proved that illiteracy of farming communities may no longer be um, an excuse to deny some form of extension systems. We complain, oh, they are not educated, they are not this, this, but um, it doesn't take much to use a mobile phone or to connect to a radio or to sit in front of your television or radio to listen or to watch a new practice that is happening somewhere or to see a video clip that has been made for some progressive farmers somewhere and then I thought, it doesn't take much to be able to see that. It's seeing and believing. The social system and um, networks in Africa and Asia also aid in the sharing of knowledge. The availability of a few mobile phones to start with can quickly spread a message from an authentic source to clan members, solidarity association members, and other members of the community. If you don't have, your neighbor may have. And through conversation, you may also get a message. Mobile telephony in combination with radio enables messages to be given to a large number of farmers. The use of knowledge management web portals with useful production and marketing information has even been tried in some communities in Asia and Africa with some challenges which are not insurmountable. Many a time we hammer on the, on the challenges, but these are not challenges we cannot um, um, overcome. Evidences also suggest that the technology is being effectively used in some countries in Africa and Asia with remarkable success in, on market price information, weather forecasts, transport information, information on storage facilities, and information related to crop and livestock diseases, and general advice related to agriculture. Some people in 2008 um, studied the impact of agricultural price radio broker, agricultural price on radio broadcast on the spread of market information in Uganda. Exploiting the variation across space between households with and without access to a radio, they found evidence suggesting that better informed farmers managed to bargain for higher farm prices on their surplus production. Similarly, studies conducted in selected countries in sub-Saharan Africa in Tanzania, Malawi, Mali, Mozambique, Ghana, and South Africa show that rural radios with innovative programs, including dramas and radio forums tailored to rural communities are an effective way of communicating agricultural messages. A mobile phone innovation in my native Ghana covers about 800,000 farmers who produce the main agricultural commodity of the country, which is cocoa. A pilot program called Cocoa Lake, launched by the Ghana Cocoa Board, which purchases most of the cocoa in the country, provides cocoa farmers with useful information about improving farming practices, from safety, uh, farm safety, crop disease prevention, uh, post-harvest production, and crop marketing. In this program, farmers receive information and specific answers to questions at no charge through voice and SMS messages in their local language or English or uh, some other um, languages that um, farmers can use. There is an increasing cooperation across countries in knowledge sharing. For example, 26 countries in Eastern and Southern Africa have come together to implement a synergistic approaches in agriculture, energy, forestry, water, and promote the sustainable land and water management to move toward a green economy in line with Rio Plus 20 objectives. The initiative underlines a real serial, serious South to South cooperation amongst countries through sharing of knowledge on various innovative issues and practices. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank you once again for coming to this workshop and, the, and this launch. 
It is the hope of the International Food Policy Research Institute that the portal will contribute to the vision of the Institute of a world without hunger and malnutrition. In this respect, we shall continue to carry out these strategic activities of research, capacity strengthening, and communication to eliminate hunger and reduce poverty in the world. I thank you very much and um, would like to communicate and then interact more with you during the break. Thank you. So, Ochere, for an interesting uh, overview of what is happening in the global level. The world has become a small village and we have to learn from each other. We used to say that India has a lot of things to share with Africa, but now if you go and look around in Africa, we have a lot more to learn from Africa as well. And I'm very grateful for Poyo to bring the global uh, aspects of what we are trying to do here in terms of the ITP Center for Advanced Agriculture Practices working with the International Food Policy Research Institute and leading institutions like TNAU. I talked about technology, I talked about institutions and policy to bring that all together to farmers, but we can't do that unless we have content. Content has to be of high quality. Content has to be evidence-based. Content has to be field-tested so that farmers are not disappointed when we give the content to them. It is not only content, but also the capacity to absorb the content. And farmers' capacity, capacity of the knowledge intermediaries, extension workers, private sector individuals have to be strengthened. Without that, we are not going to take the content to the farmers. It will still remain in the bookshelf. Someone said, why the research is on the shelves? Because that's where it belongs. We have not been highly relevant. The technology is relevant, useful, it will spread like wildfire. We have seen that. So we need to take the content to the farmers that requires capacity, but also the connectivity. We are talking about connectivity, the ICT in agriculture, and IKP, Center for Advanced Agriculture Practices, is all about connecting farmers with knowledge through building the capacity. 